Check, check. There's a light. Oh. Hello. There we go. Good afternoon, everybody. It's great to see so many people come out for today's uh, final concert. This has been uh, an awesome day with, uh, with our brass players here at WIU, but also some visiting bra brass players from the area and the region. So. Uh, we've been doing some warm-up sessions and some master classes and some just hanging out as brass players, checking out all the awesome exhibits, and I want to give a quick thank you to our uh, exhibitors, uh, Quinlan and Fabish and Kidder Music, so we want to thank them for coming down here. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure to work with them and hang out with them and, and just keep that relationship going between WIU and, and them. Uh, so the, the first piece you heard was uh, by the Lemoyne Brass Quintet, and that was Eric Awazen's Grand Valley Fanfare. That's kind of becoming one of our staple pieces that we play for many things. Uh, but it's been awesome to have that piece take shape. Um, so we are going to bring out our next group, uh, which will be the Poulenc Trio. So I'm going to bring ask them to come up here now. So thank you so much for being here. Hope you enjoy the show. Cool, glad you left it on. <laughs> So my name's Neil, uh, we got Becca on trumpet and Sean on the trombone, and we're gonna be playing uh, some brass trio music for you. So as you might could have figured out, a brass trio is three brass instruments consisting of horn, trombone, and trumpet, in that order. Yeah, there we go, there we go, yeah, there we go. <laughs> um, so the piece we're gonna be playing for you is uh, the Full Length Sonata. Uh, so Full Length was a composer um, in like the late 1800s and early 1900s. Um, he was big in like the modernist era. Um, so this piece was written in 1922, and if you know your world history, it was written shortly after World War I, um, and World War I was not a great time for the world, if you could believe it. Um, so this piece is, uh, it kind of brings, it's, there's a lot of like humor and sarcasm, and you know, it kind of just like this idea of like bringing some joy into a pretty, pretty messed up world that was left over after World War I. So we get to hear a lot of that 
And uh, this is also a very standard piece for a brass trio. This is like one of the earliest pieces that was written for like a brass chamber group. Um, and it's really cool, really awesome, and I hope you guys enjoy.
While they are setting up, I'll say a few words about the next group. Um, my name is Dr. Gardner, and I'm the Horn Professor here at Western. And um, this is just, I'll reiterate, been such a wonderful day, I think, for all of us. So much joyful music making and getting to know each other. Um, it's been really a pleasure, so thank you, all of you who are here. Um, this next ensemble is a group of four horn students that make up the Faust Scholarship Horn Quartet, we call it, in the studio. And um, I'm going to read to you a little bit about this scholarship. This scholarship was established in 2011 by Randall and Sharon Faust. Randall Faust is here with us. Let's give him a little applause. Thank you. It was established in memory of his parents, Claire and Hazel Faust. Dr. Faust's father was a musician and a band director, and his mother, a local piano teacher. Together, they instilled in Randall a love for music and provided the direction that led Randall to the horn. Recipients must be a returning music major enrolled in horn lessons, have a 3.0 GPA, actively participate in chamber music ensembles, and support the WIU Horn Festival outreach, which this year the Horn Festival has been uh, part of the Brass Festival. So these kids, grown-ups, I think of them as kids, but th these, these adults uh, worked very hard today to make sure all our chairs and stands were where they needed to be and all of these things. And they're going to perform for you what they've been working on this semester. Um, each of them received some scholarship for being a part of this ensemble, and um, for everyone else who's here, just another plug for chamber music experience. Is, it's the hardest thing we do on our instruments, and so we get the most from it. So without any further ado, the Scholarship Horn Quartet.
All right, this next tune is um, a standard in the brass quintet repertoire. It's titled D. Bankel Sangaluder, uh, written in the 17th century. But funny enough, we don't know who actually wrote it. Um, but this is an arrangement of Robert Caton uh, from Robert King. Uh, we played this uh, at the Wind Ensemble concert just last week, and it was really fun working with these guys. Uh, we learned a lot, you know, when it comes to listening to the ensemble. It's very different to play in a brass quintet rather than just a wind ensemble. There's a lot less people and funny enough, more things going on, you know. So we, <laughs> we gotta, you gotta know who's important at wh what time and when to play out and know when to shut your mouth. So we hope you enjoy D. Bankel single leader. Next, I'll just talk here. Uh, so uh, we're gonna do some changing up here, but next we're gonna go into some of our own uh, instrument choirs that we've had going that are part of our normal studio classes and, and ensembles here at, at Western. Uh, we're gonna start with the trombone choir. So this is the, uh, the seven trombonists that 
uh, all take lessons from me and we meet with every week. Um, and part of our studio class each week is we'll have some ensemble time. Um, so we're gonna perform two short pieces for you. The first one is by Beethoven, which uh, I'll give a short story about that. Really, Beethoven did not write much for the trombone. Um, no sonatas, no concertos, nothing like that for trombone. Um, we have very little from him. He was luckily um, one of the few that put us into his symphonies, not till the fifth and not till the fourth movement, but at least we were there. So <laughs> that's, that's something we'll, uh, we'll take as for what we can. What we can. But this three equality we're about to play is a piece that he wrote. Um, an equal is just a, uh, a piece for like instruments. So in this case, for four trombones. Um, it's written with, uh, normally with alto, tenor, and bass. So we're going to do that here as well. So we're going to have one of our students playing on the alto trombone, which is in the key of E flat, not B flat. Um, so the slide's much shorter. Everything is a little more difficult to, to handle, but a nice, smaller, um, more, uh, more correct sound for the, the uh, early 1800s. Um, and this piece was actually performed at Beethoven's funeral himself. So uh, we have an interesting um, relationship with him. But so without further ado, hopefully they'll show up here. Excellent. All right, good. Uh, <laughs> Please enjoy the trombone choir performing at Beethoven's Three Equality. Thank you. 
Uh, this is totally different, um, and it's actually an octet, which means I get to play on this, so that'll be fun. Um, so this is uh, Chris Sharp's Apogee Fanfare. Apogee Stadium is the name of the football stadium at University of North Texas, which is his alma mater. So uh, Chris wrote this piece for the UNT Trombone Consortium, and um, it's been a, it's a great piece. Luckily, it's made its way around, and uh, Chris Sharp now teaches at Murray State University and is doing an excellent job there. But yeah, so we're gonna end uh, our portion of the concert, there goes my Apple Pencil, with <laughs> Chris Sharp's Apogee Fanfare. Thank you so much. All right, well, we don't need to make a set change for this, so I'm just gonna be talking and tap dancing until my students walk out. Uh, so, our trumpet ensemble, uh, like trombone choir, meets during our studio time, and it's one of the ways that we can work on blending as a trumpet section, which really transfers very well into our ensembles, and they, they get used to playing with one another and matching each other's styles and knowing each other's tendencies, and it's also just a really great culture and bonding activity for the studio. Um, so we're gonna be performing two pieces. The first piece is Handel's Water Music, the Hornpipe. Hey, guys. Uh, so, the, if you're familiar with your music history, uh, the hornpipe and uh, the counterparts of water music were performed for King George I uh, flo while floating on a barge down the River Thames. So, little do they know, uh, next week we're actually going to take it out on the Lemoyne. Uh, that was a joke, you can laugh, thank you. <laughs> All right. So. So, uh, this, he liked it so much, uh, 
that he actually had the orchestra play it three times. And the orchestra that this would have actually been written for uh, did not consist of trumpets, but because the trumpet is so awesome, uh, it's known for proclaiming for royalty. So this really fit the bill because this was performed for, for a king. Uh, we're not gonna play it three times today. Uh, we're just gonna do it once, but I hope you enjoy uh, a uh, hornpipe from Water Music by our guest conductor, Tom Arns, Senior Music Education Manager. Next piece, so this is Here's That Rainy Day. Uh, this is originally a tune by Jimmy Van Heusen, uh, but uh, made famous by uh, Frank Sinatra's done some recordings of it, uh, the late great Bill Evans on piano. Uh, both of our arrangements today are by somebody named Jim Olcott, and uh, he was probably one of the very first people to ever actually write for trumpet ensemble, and his arrangements have become kind of a staple of the repertoire. Uh, this uh, particular edition is gonna actually have me on the melody, so uh, total contrast to hornpipe, we're going totally a jazz element right now. So hope you enjoy, here's that rainy day.
the horn ensemble. <laughs> We're brass family, but we all think we play the best instrument. You can't figure that out yet. Um, out on stage in just a minute will be the members of the WU Horn Studio. We're going to play two pieces for you in the reverse order of what they're listed as in the program. We're going to start with Heroic Brew, which is for six horn parts, and um, we're going to perform that. And then I will join the ensemble, and Dr. Faust is going to come up and conduct us in the Campbell Fanfare, and he'll share a little bit with you about the tradition of that fanfare as part of our horn festival every year. So. That's all I have to say. Hopefully they'll be ready here in a second.
afternoon. My name is Randall Faust, and I've had the distinct honor of having been associated with this event since we had the very first Brass Fest back in 1998. We have several people in the audience, uh, a bass trombone player somewhere around here, and uh, one of our distinguished people from WIUM, and a tuba player or two uh, who have all been uh, long-time participants in, in this event. And so it's a great honor to be here. You see this piece is called The Campbell Fanfare, and you probably wonder who, who is Campbell. Well, Douglas Campbell uh, was a horn professor at Michigan State University for many years, but also was the teacher at the National Music Camp at Interlochen. And uh, Dr. Gardner studied with uh, Dr. Campbell then, and uh, uh, Douglas Campbell's good friend and a mentor to me, and he was honored here as the featured clinician in 2006, and uh, we had hornets coming from all over the country uh, to attend that particular event. One of the people was Thomas Joslein, who currently is a hornist with the St. Louis Symphony Orchestra, and uh, Thomas had been a student of Dr. Campbell's as well. And so he composed this particular composition in honor of uh, Dr. Campbell. Um, and Douglas Campbell uh, is 100 years old this year. So uh, uh, he, I, I guess I'm not the oldest horn player on the stage today. So <laughs> maybe second old, I don't know. Uh, so uh, this piece was written in his honor. Thomas uh, composed this piece in the spring of 2006. About six months later, he won a position playing with the New York Philharmonic for a couple of years. And so uh, uh, I won't guarantee that if you play this piece, you'll get a job with the New York Philharmonic, but it won't, won't hurt. <laughs> the Campbell Fanfare of Thomas Rosley.
stage here for our two large brass ensembles. So if you are our stage crew, please come on up and give us up. And everyone else, sit tight.
kick off the final portion of the concert with some Gabrielli. Uh, brass and Gabrielli are, are go hand in hand. Uh, this is a piece from his Symphony Sacre, or Sacred Symphony, um, 1597, is that, that sounds right, I think so. Um, great, wonderful piece of music, originally in, designed to be done antiphonally, so from uh, multiple areas, you really get that stereo effect. Very, very, very cool. Um, we're gonna kinda do a, an abridged version of that, but um, if you haven't maybe checked out uh, from a few weeks ago, uh, we had a member of the music education faculty, Dr. Ger Dr. Richard Kangro, do a presentation as distinguished faculty um, to talk about collaboration and what it takes to play music like this. He did a, a wonderful job directing um, a student and faculty group where they played this from different portions of the balcony. Very, very cool sound, very difficult to put together, but amazing results. So we're gonna start with that. Um, and so you'll hear a kind of a, a choir on the right side and on the left side doing a lot of things. It should be somewhat like a conversation between both parts. So hope you enjoy it.
So the last piece for our WIU Brass Choir is going to be Riverbend Fanfare by Robert Sears. Um, Robert and I actually, we went to uh, the University of Illinois together and we played in a brass octet and he is really, really passionate about writing for brass chamber music and uh, in a variety of idioms, uh, brass octet especially. Um, and this piece just happened to kind of work really, really well for large brass choir as well. Uh, Riverbend Fanfare was written for the, uh, what they call the Fred Brass Institute down in Virginia that is held over the summers. Uh, that's led by uh, trumpet player uh, Buddy Deschler. Uh, so this was written for that institute for the faculty to play originally, and uh, we're excited to close out the brass choir cor portion uh, of this concert with it. So I hope you enjoy Riverbend Fanfare. So while they're coming up to the stage with their instruments, quiet please when I'm talking, thank you. Um, I am going to share with you a little bit of information about our upcoming exciting activities, um, which I'm happy to be a part of. Coming up this summer in June, we are hosting a multitude of music-related camps here at WIU. You can find out more by visiting wiu.edu slash community music school. We do have an early registration opportunity for any of the parents who are in the audience today of our um, guests joining us on stage. We would love to have them for band camp or any of the other programs that we're offering, so please check those out. And if you have any questions, um, I'm happy to answer them after our program. This will be our final piece on the program featuring everyone who's here today. And uh, we'll be performing something very near and dear to all of our hearts. Western loyalty. So please enjoy once we all get settled here and thank you again for being part of today.